call the meeting to order. At least you're gonna wander First up is right. public comment. This is comment about anything that's not on our agenda. I don't see any hands here or there. Um, approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. A second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll let you sort out, Trevor, who the second was from. <laughs> Approval of uh, prior meeting minutes. I didn't see those. <laughs> so we don't have any this time. We can skip it. We'll move on. Uh, invited guests. We have uh, VTC. Right. You want to start? You move for that. Okay. So what we had others that came in do is explain to us um, kind of what you have going on, what your what you need for law enforcement services. Uh, some of them were what you need versus what you'd like. Right. Um, and some of the conversation went into things that would help but weren't maybe necessarily law enforcement services. Right. So. Well, I mean, our numbers are down right now. We have two of our dormitories that are empty, so we're low enrolled. Um, we're hoping for more next year. Of course, with the, the um, merger with all the other Vermont state schools, um, they kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, two of the residence halls are empty. Um, I don't know. I mean, my biggest fear and our biggest fear up there is active shooter. Should there be an active shooter situation, we need help. You know, we're not certified law enforcement officers. Um, however, I did work Randolph for 30 some odd years, as most of you probably know. Um, so, you know, I have the background. I'm just currently not certified. I let my certification go when Randolph PD closed down, I don't know, three or four years ago, whatever. Yeah. Um, Emil, do you ever have occasion to call for either the state police or Randolph PD to back you up up there? Yeah, we call. You had that thing last year? Probably, yeah, three or four times a year at the most, probably. Okay. For what kinds of things? Um, well, a couple of the times it's been for some of our neighbors that have come onto campus with weapons, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the neighbors had a disagreement with his mother last year. and. He came on campus with a sword and a gun. So didn't affect us any. I mean, he wasn't looking. He just wanted to get out of the house. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, state police and sheriff's department and Randolph, I think. Well, no, Randolph wasn't in place yet. Sheriff's department and the state police were up there, and, and they, um, they did find the individual. And, um, but you think it's about three to four times a year that you might need... Yeah, some, police someone assistance. last night we called and we had a student that got scammed on an internet scam. So we called the state police last night. They're looking into that at this point. Um, so it's, you know, some of the minor stuff like that. Um, we've had a couple of break-ins this year, like the rest of, of the center. Actually, just one time, um, same time as they hit up the uh, nursing home and, and whatnot. There's a couple of cars broken in, too. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's, I mean, we're on 24-7, um, somebody's always, somebody, I say somebody's always there, somebody's always on duty. Um, you know, occasionally we have to run downtown to bring a student to gift or something like that, so yep. nobody's on campus at that point, but, you know, we have somebody on duty, so technically we are covering 24-7. And do you ever, uh, but you guys don't back up Randolph, for example? Right. You're not certified, yeah. Are you at full staff? No, I'm down one person still. If anybody wants a job. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, do you have um, many issues, concerns, problems that involve mental health? That we're seeing more and more of. <clears throat> we do have a um, student support service up there, which we do have, you know, a couple of, I don't know that they're fully licensed, but mental health counselors, and we do have a couple of um, counselors on, like on payroll, where we'll call them if we need, if we need to. 
We also have a working relationship with CVH um, for their mental health. We have sent students up there a couple times. But that's one thing I think all colleges are seeing more and more now. The mental health is, is increasing in you know the student population. More and more mental just in, in, just in the so, news today about right. I yeah. think down at Dartmouth actually. Yeah. Are but, they 24 hours? Do you have mental a mental health counselor on that's t there 24 hours? No. No, just we're the only ones on after like five, six o'clock at night. If you had an issue, though, would they come in? Yeah, yeah. Right. Would they contract with the town to cover the three or four times a month we might need somebody? That I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, we could just explore it. Yeah, right? we could explore it. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, between your counselors and help you might get at Central Vermont, everybody's pretty responsive as far as mental health. Oh, yeah, life goes. absolutely. Okay. Yep. You don't, do you have we any don't. relationship with Clara Martin Center? Um, not so much anymore. We used to. What, okay. When did that change? Um, we do, I mean, now and then we do end up calling them and, and they'll, um, you know, have somebody come down and visit them. But, I don't know, we had some issues three or four years ago with them and, and um, some of our staff didn't see eye to eye with some of their staff, maybe. Okay. I don't want to get into too much. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> That's helpful to know. Yep. We, do take, we do take safety very serious. Um, we take mental health very serious. Um, we try to stay on top of everything. We don't have a lot of problems up there. Um, we try to keep a handle on things. Um, I got a very good staff. They know what I expect of them. And I know, you know, what the limits are too. So um, it just works out good altogether. So, so there again, I mean, what we need the most is should we have an active shooter situation? Um, fire department. We work pretty closely with the fire department. They train quite often up on campus, um, which you guys probably don't want to know about the fire department, anyways. But just emergency services, you know. That that one um, time you had. Apparently, the person with the weapon and the sword. State police responded pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, they were there before I even knew what was going on. Of course, yeah. it, it had caught, it, the incident had been called in as a domestic mm -hmm. um, violent situation at the house. So they were on their way there when they found out through telephone that the person had left. We were on that day, right? You were up there pretty quick too, if I remember right. You, <coughs> Scott and I go way back too. Were so. <laughs> you satisfied you, with the state police's response? Yes and no. I mean, I'm sure. satisfied with their response. Um, however, they're getting stretched thinner and thinner all the time too. As is Randolph. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah. So it's like sometimes, you know, we could call them and they could have a trooper there in two minutes, and other times you might wait an hour, you know. Right. You, you mentioned a staff. How big is your staff? Um, right now, I'm, well, I have five, we're five full-time positions and two part-time positions. Okay. I'm down one full-timer right now. Thank you. <clears throat> Great. Any other questions? Thanks for coming in and chatting with us. Mm, no Thank problem. You. Thank you. If we can be of any assistance, let us know. And I do, just another thing for the record, I do keep in touch with Scott. You know, if we have things going on up there that they might need to know about in the village, I let him know and vice versa. Um, sometimes things from the village overrun into us and sometimes our stuff overruns into the village. So our students do come down to the village and, and do things, spend their money. Party hard. <laughs> Party, yeah. Bowling alley, exactly. Bowling alley, wow. Being 19 year olds. <laughs> All right, thanks, Emil. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. you. All right. Jamie is here from Shaw's, right? I am. Okay. So the same type of question. Um, 
So I work at Shaz, um, I am human resources technically. Um, ask me questions. <laughs> Do you have occasion to call police? Absolutely. And do, does state police respond or does Randolph police respond? So in the past, we have been technically state police territory. Yep. Um, but there are many occasions I would prefer to call these guys. Um, we have a lot of no trespassing, theft. Um, and the response time for the state police can vary depending on you know how many people are on duty for the day um, the one issue that we run into and obviously I mean these guys are so short staffed that a lot of it happens at night and so then we have to call the state police because these guys are not on duty would it, would it be more comforting to you at Shaw's and that whole plaza, and you probably talk to other people that okay. have stores there too, that if that was part of the district yes, going absolutely. down through, um, the yep. benefit to that? Absolutely. <clears throat> what time do you close? 9 p.m. So is this stuff, when you say it happens at night, is it generally before 9, or is it stuff yep. that happens? Um, it's before 9. It's when the people who do have no trespassing orders currently with us. Um, know that upper management is not in the store um, and there are less staff in the store, less, you know, shoppers in the store as well. Mm -hmm. So. So how often would you say that someone from Shaw's has to attend court sessions for people being arrested for these things? Um, I've been there eight years and we've never had to go to court, but we... Interesting. Yeah. So even though these things may happen, how many times is it prosecuted when the police department shows up? Could, I, yeah, can you say that yeah. again, Joe? I didn't really how many times are they prosecuted? How many times are they prosecuted? If you have 20 calls a month to 15 of them, is someone going all the way in cuffs? I've had two in the past six months that have been prosecuted. Can you average out how often you, your staff has to call um, police? At least on a weekly basis, I would say. I'm well, sorry, say that again? call on a weekly basis. On a so weekly basis? Once yeah. a week? Yeah. Yep. Sometimes we don't because they're off the premises before somebody mentions that they've seen somebody. And that's mostly for trespass, for yes. the people who've been trespassed. Or, yes, and we do have theft. Um, oh, I bet you do. A lot. I bet you yeah. do. Yeah. And people generally get trespassed because of the theft. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But do you still have some staffing that deals with that also? Uh, yeah. Um, it's harder at night because we only have the night manager on, whereas during the day there's at least two to three of us plus department managers. So there's more eyes during the day. But do you have, didn't they, were they like loss prevention coordinators no. or there was um, some title Shaw's like that they had? only has one loss prevention person for the entire state who oversees all the stores. So if we do have an issue, it's more internal, like if there's theft within the staff. Mm -hmm. We Got have it. to jump through hoops with the company once we call the police department. So nine times out of 10, we don't even let them know, the company know that we have called the police department. Wow. It's just easier for mm. us to have them handle it. <laughs> so it, it's hard. It's hard. Are the interactions changing at all in terms of their character? Where maybe you used to have sort of shoplifting and it was a little bit calmer. Do you find people are more unreasonable or angry or more reactive than before? Is it um, no real change that you've noticed there? So the company policy is the only person who can approach somebody who we assume have we have seen take something is actually only the store director so okay. the rest of us just have to report it how long have you been there My eight years eight years and so when you have like a little fender bender in the parking lot or something, does that, that doesn't impact lot. you or is that parking lot doesn't? The, the parking lot is not Shaw's responsibility. That is Palmer Lowe's responsibility. 
So what happens with that if somebody does, they call you, Scott? Yeah. Yep. And, um, and usually we, um, unfortunately that's, you know, state police or whatever, they call up, they call the state police and they tell them they can't handle it and we end up going anyway. Yeah. Yep. I, I had the opportunity <coughs> to sit in to some of the employee training sessions, which you know. Yeah. And one of the things, as I remember, in terms of um, theft in, you know, customers stealing stuff, the attitude is be very, very careful. Correct. And, and don't be confrontational. No. Um, they train us to, if we do approach associate, uh, a shoplifter, the way to go about it is offer them help. See if they're looking for something, like deter them, like let them know that you're present and that you you see them, but you're not allowed to ask them to empty their bags or anything like that. You mean so all those nice Shaw's employees who ask me if I need help finding something, they think no. I've stolen something? No. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell I the see. difference between somebody shoplifting and somebody looking for something. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I go in sometimes with my time. wife, yeah, exactly. and someone will ask me, can I help you? And I'll say, I'm looking for a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and what do I tell you? I can't help you with that. <laughs> <clears throat> Wrong store. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jamie. <clears throat> did we hear anything from the barn? We did. We did invite some folks from the barn. Um, they said they'd come. I don't know if the tech issues, maybe if they were trying to join by Zoom, that could have been it. Um, off of some calendar invites. So we will refresh that and try again. We got at least another bite at the Apple coming in a couple of weeks. So we'll, we'll stay with it. But we thought we had the full set lined up. So. But so my understanding with them is they've actually hired security through a contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I met him. I actually was going into the barn to purchase something, and there was a security officer there, an armed security officer there. So we had a, an interesting conversation, nice conversation, just, you know, mm -hmm. you know, are you having like armed robberies or things like that? And no, no, no. You know, like they, they have a, a lot of theft here? He says, well, not when I'm here particularly. He says, well, I'm sure that's probably why they hired me more, just a kind of a deterrent. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I'm sure they have their, their they share have, of, right? they of, 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 of shoplifting where they were looking up there. For that. I mean, let's right. face it, people come in and grab something and off on the highway they go. Right, I mean they're 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 they're, they're right there, you know. So I'm sure that that they do. But he he didn't really seem overzealous on the you know crime was rampant. But it's a it's a convenience store, and these things I think are not unusual 20 years ago versus what they are now. No, you, you know. Interesting. Okay. I also uh, just to follow up on something. Tom Tom Hardy was was here a few weeks ago. Or a few sessions ago, maybe more than a few weeks, um, and he said that the sheriff's department doesn't deliver warrants. Well, I just happened to yesterday run into a nice officer from the sheriff's department over in, over in Sharon. Actually, he was doing a radar section over there, and so I asked him about it. I said, "So, do you do warrants?" He said, "Of course we do." He says, "We work for the courts." He says, "We deliver warrants all of the time." I said, "You do?" He says, "It's in statute that we deliver warrants." So that's that's interesting. I thought it was that was that was the case. He says I delivered five of them yesterday. Interesting. So it was a, a, a bit of a difference of. of but they were having thought. staffing issues where they weren't weren't some were, some things weren't being done right. at first. I don't know if that's changed, but I know that yeah. was an issue. Well, they they maybe they had, had some staffing issues in Orange County, but maybe not in in in, in Windsor mm -hmm. County. I don't know that, but that's their job. So I, you know, and I thought that it was, and, and I, I just just more from memory than anything else. So I just happened to see he was radar and folks, and I was coming out of Sharon by Tracy sta Station there, mm -hmm. and so I, I pulled in and talked to him for for about you know, half a year. Told him who I was, why I was asking him questions. He was, he was a very nice gentleman. He knew he knew you, Scott. 
um, you know, very nice young man, you know, just, uh, and hope he's always safe. But it was interesting, a conversation uh, about it, you know. I, said, I asked him, I said, you know, is Sharon seeing a lot of, a lot of crime increase? Or, and he says, no, not particularly. He says, you know, we're hired by Sharon to come in and patrol these roads, you know, and, you know, for whatever hours a, a month, a year, or whatever that they contract for. Uh, with that, sort of like what we did here at one point. Yeah, so. All right, let's keep moving on the agenda. Um, discuss the operating options. Continue the budget review. I got some handouts. We are. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. These are what we just sent you. out. They're all for now. Yep, yeah, only Neil gets one. <laughs> okay, you can make all the choices. Yeah. Yeah. What you do? You were going through it like you thought maybe there was multiple copies to hand down. I said, no, that no, was no, all for no, you. No, I was trying to print what you sent out oh, earlier, okay. and, I, and my printer was not working well at home. Oh, yeah, this, this, is like, oh, this isn't working. Did yeah, right. you not go? I'm trying not to print these things on the hospital's <laughs> done. We're already in enough debt. I just tried to do it at home. Team building, right? We moved my What's team to build now, the This town. is revised the from what we yeah. had before. New and improved. <laughs> <laughs> yep. One uh, ream of paper. Improved, I suppose, in the eye of the beholder. Oops. Um, hang on, we've got to work around for this. If it, doesn't, if it kicks me back out. Um, so one of the things that's in the packet, we tried to compile everything that we sent you on Friday along with the newer versions of the budgets and um, can walk you through a little bit what's different in those. Um, this is as well, let me just set up the work around, right? Just over zealous with this. This seemed to work for us last time. Here. <clears throat> so all that was updated here were the numbers um, for these different models and we updated the little staircase at the bottom. Um, some of these I'll walk through exactly what they generally have the same set of um, increases from that first version in terms of we increased capital transfers, we went back and looked at numbers for uniforms, for training, figured out a metric for that. Um, there are um, There is a set aside in there for whatever we want to do, just so we don't lose the line. There's some money in there for um, whether it be community outreach worker, contract stuff, social worker services, so I'll point out where that is, but we threw some dollars in there to at least make sure that we were holding it and inching it closer, but we'll have to figure out exactly what we want to do there. Um, so slight increases in each of them stemming from those changes. One of the things that you'll see in your packets, these little green squares by the line numbers, I tried to highlight where you'll see a change yeah, um, in that. Anytime we change the bottom line, these taxes full assessment numbers will change with it, so that's why you'll see that on all three. Um, in the existing district model, none of these models have any changes in personnel. We still have that same staffing footprint, footprint that we tried to write up in that table that's also included in here. So it's the same number of staff, same number of everything else. Um, <coughs> so you'll see these costs move with it. You'll see some changes when we get to the modified district. We had a couple of extra hours in for part-time officers in that model from an earlier version of that. We now have that same number of part-time hours from the table. Um, so that, that moved that number a little bit. So no changes in any of these um, through here. And then with the existing district model, there's not much that changed from the first time. This is where just stuck in $10,000 into each version as starter, talk about it, not lose the line money in terms of if we um, to begin that embedded social work community outreach worker conversation. So we put in contracted services because we talked I think, a little bit last time about maybe going that route or at least exploring that initially. Obviously you go to an employee, it goes to a different number and it goes back up top. And then training and development, we put that at about $1,500 per officer. Um, we used a metric that Scott said they'd used in his um, sheriff days prior. 
um, of about $1,200 per, so it's a, maybe a little higher, but you'll see that we carry that one consistently throughout those training lines. Um, some people will use more if they go to more advanced or specialized training and there's travel and lodging involved, and others will use less if they're staying closer to home and or trained through in-house resources or wherever it might be. So those are the only two changes there. And then the final change in the existing, we moved all of the transfers to police equipment reserve up, thinking ahead to replacement schedules in the outer years. This doesn't touch the fact that it's, you gotta add in a vehicle, $60,000 for POP, as we talked about last time. Those would still have to be paid for separately from any of these models. So we worked them into the operating budget. If we could, we'd just be figuring out when you pick a model, what's the number of vehicles how do we get that paid for? The ones we have now were through ARPA funds. There's that model. We talked about lease finance, and we talked about some of those others in terms of how do you pick them up. But this is just to sort of set us up for the years ahead when you get into regular replacement cycles. It was a placeholder before. It was woefully low. At some point, we're going to have to be in the game more aggressively anyway, regardless. So. Did you pick up the personal equipment, though? In this one, we don't have much when it comes to the uniforms and the personal equipment. We could if we had higher dollar ones. Those were about 3300 each when we suited up for the original models. We bought a couple extra sets of stuff uh, in the hopes slash eventuality that we'd eventually have someone to wear it all. Um, so we've got about, what, two sets already in house. So when you see that number for uniforms in future ver or the other versions scale out, it's reflecting that we're adding essentially you know, two in the next iteration and two more after that um, using that $3,300 metric. So there's probably still some refinement on some of the equipment, some of the other costs, make sure we've got enough of the, um, I don't call it more specialized, but do we change the portfolio with regards to tactical rifles, any of that type of equipment, um, things that go with you, things that we may need on hand. So those probably still have to be factored into wherever we land. This is just the next step uh, on the path. Um, Neil has a question. To the extent that the police department has to do work outside of the district, mm -hmm. those numbers <coughs> are included in there. They're buried in there somehow. Mm -hmm. Can I bring up the letter that we all got from Marty Strange? If you want, I mean, it's your, yeah. it's your meeting. Because right? well, go I'm budget. confused as to what it mean, what the yeah. up, upshot of that letter, what it meant. It, we'll, we'll get, I think, to the answer of what he raised when we get okay. to the third version here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. And so those are the changes. This is the existing district model. So you end up about 856. As I mentioned last time, that would have been about 7%. That one would have been 7% um, greater than the budget we started with last time, um, and so it's still closer to that. So. So I think the one the one piece that we do need to talk about is how we get to a number for the mental health yeah. side of it, and um, I think Kristen, Kristen is the best one to try to help us maybe get through. I was it was interesting to hear VTC had somebody on staff that was available it being yeah. it would be worth a conversation with them to say, hey, you know, is this something we could contract with you the you know, few times that we need somebody I would expect it would be a contract and not fall under contract and services and not not be not be a, a like a town employee. It, it isn't a town employee in any of the jurisdictions that currently have an embedded worker. It's an employee of the mental health agency, and it's not the it's not uh, and they are full time employees because they are utilized on so many calls. Um, and some areas have set it up where the towns are, like for example, Montpelier Berry share one person who was employed by Washington County Mental Health. And each town um, put in the pot a certain amount of money, and they just had to up it in order to hire somebody because they realized it was just they couldn't find anybody for over a year. It was vacant, and they needed to raise the salary. Mm -hmm. So is the, the is their salary completely covered by the department, or does Washington no, County kick Washington in? No, Washington County some kicks in okay. in that one place. They kick in fifty percent. Okay. That's the only. 
um, set up like that in the state that I'm aware of. Everybody else, it's 100% paid for by the mental health agency, except that the state police, when they started their pilot program and they just went to somebody in every barracks, they gave the Department of Mental Health a chunk of money to pay for those people. So they're state employees, but they're employees of the Department of Mental Health, mm -hmm. actually of the agency who gets money from the Department of Mental Health. So the state police money went over to DMH, and they, then it's funneled through them as their salary. Um, and it's and there there is um, I want to make sure there's not one of them in the state who is part time. There well actually so Newport Newport City started off she was at 24 hours and I think now she's increased up to 32 hours a week because they use her, they they use them all the time and in fact some cities are now going to two. Like I think I mentioned before, St. Albans Town went to, uh, or St. Albans City went to two embedded people, so they had coverage on the weekends. And in fact, in this next budget, the state police are asking the General Assembly to uh, uh, fund the, put in the governor's budget or have in the budget enough to have two in every barracks because they're seeing the, the need is so great and it's um, saving them on the policing hours of the staff of the barracks. So just about everybody is 100% funded through the mental health agency and you know but those funds are coming from the state. So the towns aren't aren't uh, incurring that. The one thing St. Albans did is they raised their uh, city they had some tax up there. I don't remember what it was on but that's that was the initiative uh, in 2022, in August of 2022, there was a, a ballot measure that asked specifically if the voters would raise their some local tax. Local yes, your local option. One percent in order to fund the mental health a second mental health worker, and they passed it um, so that that person could be hired. Um, but most, so everybody, most of the embedded people are down south because HCRS, which is the mental health agency in Windsor and Wyndham counties, they started this whole idea um, probably 15 years ago. And those folks, they have expanded to uh, add a rural mental health worker. So he splits his time between Wilmington and Dover PD. Um, and his whole point of him is to get out into the rural areas. but. Um, and then they've they've changed one they've <coughs> consolidated one the Windsor and Springfield each used to have one now they've consolidated so they have one they share one person and the way I know it works in Montpelier and Barrie is uh, right now she spends three days in Barrie two days in Montpelier and then flips it the next week so that and and um, where was I just so uh, I was just down in Bennington and they just Bennington PD just the guy who starts, I think, uh, next week, um, and they have a one-year MOU with the state. They're going to share him with the Shaftesbury Barracks down there, and then after a year, uh, either the town or the mental health agency has to come up with the funding for him. But they've they got the money together from the state police, gave them money. Uh, to fund that position. They've been wanting that for a long time. Um, but there was one other thing I was going to say about that. The um, Oh, I know. When I was down in Bennington, I learned that the one of the um, barracks, uh, they looked at the data for like when they get the most calls. And so they have somebody, they don't work nine to five, they work like um, Three to midnight, or three to eleven, or something. They they altered their shift so that they they can adapt to whatever that community needs. And so the the there's no set you know um, schedule or pattern of the work hours. Every place has shifted. I know up in St. Albans they did a, a 11 a.m. because they their data showed them no mental health calls really came in till noon. So their guy starts at 11 and gets off at seven. 
but there's also several of these folks who are they take they're on call they they go home at night but then they'll come in if there's some something that happens they will come in because that's just how they are and they get paid for that through their mental health agency which is what makes sense the most. yeah it would make sense to me right, that they would right. if you needed it you know, not all of them have the flexibility to do that, but most of them, um, you know, if the if the if the police call and say we really need you on this thing, they'll go in. And like I said, they're using they're getting used in different ways around the state. The some of them go on every single welfare check. Uh, some of them go on all the DCF calls to you know help de-escalate the family. Um, some of them go on search warrants. Um, all of the state police people are issued um, vests. That, that's part of their contract, is they have to wear a vest. They don't want to, but they, that's part of the deal. So they wear a vest under their clothes, so they don't look like police officers, necessarily. Um, one of them has a, canine, a dog that's not technically a police canine dog, but it is a, uh, like a support dog that he takes on all the calls as well. But that was his own sort of side thing that he did, and he decided he wanted to incorporate it into his role. Two of them have just gone to the FBI um, hostage negotiation, or yeah, I think it's still called that, uh, training for a week in Maine. Um, that was paid for by the mental health agency that employs them. A couple, a couple others have done that in the past, but th these two just went very recently. And and. Um, Occasionally, the Vermont Police Academy has let in, if they had seats, when they do uh, the crisis negotiation training, they've let in the embedded workers as long as there's a seat. They're happy to have them. So some of what we heard last at our last meeting was the, the need for that kind of case manager function, right? The, the follow-up. The, yeah, so when the law enforcement side is done, that person, so it would make sense to me that that's more of a mental health organization employee. Yeah, yeah, and and um, you know, so I I the um, I was just with down in Bennington with the Rut the Rutland embedded person. Uh, she's at Rutland Barracks. Like we talk, so she rides with the trooper. She never she almost never takes her own car. Most of the time, she rides with the trooper. Um, and if she needs to follow up, she'll go back later, you know, with her car because of the whole, you know, she's not going to get left there. Others, like the St. Albans um, woman, she rarely goes in the cop car. She often takes her own car because she doesn't want that appearance when she arrives at a scene of getting of being with you know getting out of mm -hmm. a police car. She wants to make sure that people feel uh, like she's not part of that. We talk a lot about. How do you get introduced if you show up with the cop? Like, how do you get introduced? And uh, they're very, very thoughtful about that. Most of the time, the police will say, "This is so and so. She works with me." They never will say, "Like, she's a mental health crook, clown." So you know, they don't come right out and say that. Or she might say, um, "You know, I, I work in the community. I'm here to help you. Or how can I help you?" Like, they're very, very thoughtful about that because they want to make sure that they're not, that they're building rapport as opposed to building up, uh, you know, mm. barriers to, to access. Um, and they've, they've had one, in, one incident, I mean, that everybody talks about is in St. Albans where <coughs> an embedded worker went with the police, they were serving a mental health warrant at a house and they got shot at right through the door. And this guy, almost, he, 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 you know, he had a vest on, it wouldn't have helped him at all. It went right by his head. And uh, so then they took a step back and thought about how they were doing things up there. Um, that's the one incident that I've heard about and that I know about involving the embedded worker where there's their, because their safety is number one and the, and the police, part of the thing is now they're responsible, you know, the police is now responsible for this other person mm -hmm. who's riding with them or who may be on the scene. And so they do a lot of a lot of communication, a lot of staging. You know, let's make a plan for how we're going to do this. Um, and they never use them as a shield. <laughs> we sort of that's sort of a running uh, 
joke about how they keep them safe. <laughs> Trevor, Has there been any conversation with Claire Martin about this that you're aware of? I, I'm not. Um, the idea was kind of batted around back in the Orange County days, but it never took to root in any shape or form. Please help me if I'm wrong. Weren't, wasn't the uh, Royalton Burks looking at Claire Martin Center to help staff that? Uh, the who? Sorry? The, the Royalton Barracks. Royalton Barracks. Yeah, yeah. That was a Claire Martin position. And it's the, now open to the whole state because they haven't been able to fill it. Okay. That's um, so HCRS and everybody else, Northeast Kingdom Human Service, I mean, anybody who can find somebody who wants to... Jump down there. Yeah. Okay. But, I, I mean, they've talked to me about it. Claire Martin has um, the head of their emergency services and their um, CEO, and they're both... Very, you know, they, they're committed to trying. I mean, they, they say that they think it'd be way easier to find somebody if this was a position that could happen in Randolph, and even if it could be shared with some other agency, whether that's state police or, you know, BTC or whoever, that they are confident they could find somebody. That would, they wouldn't have the same issues as they have had with Royalton. They identify the Royalton problems with it being out next to nothing. Um, and that Randolph is a thriving metropolis, you know, compared to the Royalton Barracks. What were the, what were the problems at Royalton? They just haven't been able to find anybody. That, you know, it has to be the right fit. They've interviewed a few people, but it's not the right fit, or the uh, the the salary hasn't been enough, or you know, it just so, wasn't right. So the vacancy exists Still. at Clara Martin. Yes. Yes, and they have a budget for. That vacancy, we presume, it, that comes from the, you know, technically through the state police. But yes, that that is still available. Okay. Yeah. Do, I assume the town of Randolph gives money to Clara Martin Center every year. Yes. At least some. Well, Special appropriations. Right. The voters, appropriations. Do. The voters yeah. do. Right. The voters yeah. do. Yeah. Yes. It's like five grand. Not a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, do and do you know? I don't know if you do or not. Any idea if there are grants available to Clara Martin to help fund a an employee like similar to the cops grant yeah. is there such a thing for them um, well there's all I, I just see lots of grants about CIT training about uh, crisis intervention team training which isn't actually a, an embedded person but um, right. that are federal dollars right but but not to actually there might be, I don't know. pay a salary or a portion of a yeah. salary. I seems I they already have that. that. Okay. I wouldn't know that. They, are, they already have that. Right. If, just, the state, if the state police curious. is trying to fund it and they can't get the person, Clara Martin is trying to fund it, they already have the funding available, or else they wouldn't be out there trying to hire. Right. You okay. know, so the funding is, is there. It's more the fact of, of trying to get the person. Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, well, and it sounds like just helping out Randolph would be more attractive to somebody than being right. with the state police at that level. Or right. working directly for Claire Martin, and that's, a, that's what I've often thought, is that if you had that issue, um, like other entities do, hospitals and such, they give a call to Claire Martin, hey, we're having this issue, and someone from Claire Martin, you would expect that would, you know, that's what they do, would, would, would come in and help with those situations. Well, now, so just so you know, as of January, supposedly, as of January 1st, um, the whole state is going to this new model of mobile mental health crisis that is um, mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Mental Health has um, put out a, a R, RFP for and um, HCRS, so the, the mental health agency in Windsor and Wyndham counties has the contract but the, every single mental health agency has to has signed on to this contract where they are going to go to a new model where they have two people on they have to have a two-person response, um, and one of those people could be by telemedicine, one has to be in person, one could be a peer, but the two people, the officer doesn't count as one, it has to be two yeah. clinicians. They don't have to both be licensed, there's a lot of parameters around it, but they are gearing up for this to happen. There's a lot of training involved uh, that's going to be required. There's a a lot of meetings about it um, and nobody's really confident that anybody's gonna be ready to start this in January they were supposed to try to do a little 
pilot in one county starting in October. It didn't happen. Um, it's been a little bit like just a lot of bureaucracy, I think. Mm -hmm. How many bit. people are they talking? If it's if it's state, well, it's every single mental health agency, every county, every county. So, and that means that you have to hire people, and that's the thing that a lot of the right. mental health agencies are like, who, where are the people we're going to hire? Right. They have money for it, and they're going to get this. If they can comply with this two-person response thing, they get an enhanced rate, you know, per response, and it doesn't count if you're providing services at the emergency department. That doesn't count. You have to do it outside the hospital. And it's all because, this is all because there's one or two agencies, not our county, who have never been able to do this, never been able to actually go out and respond with police, and everybody else was supposed to be able to do that since the Irene flood. Mm. And they got money to do that, but a couple of agencies just never got it together. And so because of that inconsistency around the state, the Department of Mental Health has said, okay, well, none, none of this now we're going to do this whole thing and everybody has to do it. So a lot of agencies are completely panicked and scrambling. Um, and a lot of them still have a lot of questions because they haven't actually seen like the scope of work and some other things. So whether it happens starts in January, I, I'm guessing it'll probably more likely be March or April, but that's going to be the model. So if that really happens, then in theory, there would be somebody that Randolph PD could call. Uh, I, th I, yeah, two people, two people, <laughs> two I people believe. I think so. I think so. But okay. meanwhile, nobody right. knows where these people are going to come from when they're are all short staffed okay. anyway. Right, or where they're being. Kristen, you seem there. you seem so knowledgeable okay. about this. And so okay. the question I have: do, do they they do they have mental health like travelers? Like nurses, right? We get, we get, we get nurses travelers. from yeah. Mississippi and Alabama no, and all over workers. the country actually coming to be a nurses, you know, and they, you know, they're travelers and, and it costs a lot of money for travelers, but I'm just wondering if the mental health side of it, if they, if they do traveling throughout, you know, not country. Not social workers, not that I've ever no? seen, no. Interesting. <laughs> no, and this, the, you know, these folks are the same, I mean, then you have the, so you have the social workers, but you also have people called QMHPs, or Qualified Mental Health Professionals, and they're qualified by the Department of Mental Health, and so they have a, they're the only people who can write a mental health warrant, along with police, um, and they're the people who go to court for any criminal case, and where somebody needs to be screened for competency or sanity to, to either to do a forensic eval, it's a QMHP who has to respond to that, so that's the other, that, I mean, that's, statewide every every county um, and by law if a court calls they have to respond within two hours that's in the law um, and that that's so that's you know pretty much nine to five kind of schedule for the QMHP but that's one of the issues is a lot of counties they have one person on which might be the QMHP and so they're if they're at court they can't go to the emergency department. Or if they're in the ED working with somebody, they can't just drop everything and run to the court. So the, I think the hope is, I don't know how it's gonna work with this two-person model because there's been no mention that one of them has to be a QMHP and, and warrants can only be written by them and police. So I'm, not, I don't, I'm still waiting to see how that's gonna shake out. What, what about the staffing at Gifford as far as mental health? Um, they, last I knew, they were pretty full. They were pretty robust. They had hired a lot of behavioral health clinicians. I think they still have a wait list, but they've definitely beefed up that department. Yeah, I know that. I just wonder if that would be a resource for the town in some capacity. I doubt it. I really doubt it. I think they're too thin. Um, doing what they can to f to take care of their patients. You know. I just wondered the difference between that and CVH. I know it's bigger, but yeah, right. How that could be for VTC. Yeah. Even at CVH, mm -hmm. we don't. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times, it, it, in an emergency room, it, it because of you know the shortage of those mental health technicians that you're talking about. Um, you know, a lot of times it's just a, a nurse watching them in the TCA or. Well, in Washington County Mental Health yeah. responds to CVH. I mean, they're in the parking. Their building is in the parking lot, so yeah, they just walk yeah. over to the ED. But, but they also have lots of, they have an embedded, they have a, um, 
recovery coach in there, and I mean they've got a lot of wow. other services. Yeah. But still, our, our manpower is is quite stretched. I would say in that model, <coughs> as a line item in contracted, is probably pretty accurate. Especially if Claire Martin's got funding, they just need the staff, right, to meet that piece of it. Um, but it would seem like there's going to have to be some way of working out kind of what those roles are and how they, how you work together and at what point they take over versus your, you know, how you transition that. Yeah, every one of these. That's more operational for you. It's not. Every one of these has an MOU. They all have an MOU. So between the mental health agency and the police department or between uh, state police and the Department of Mental Health, it's all hammered out, and we, and we wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel because it's been done. I mean, it's, right, right. I mean we could tweak it for what we wanted, but um, it's pretty clear about liability and other stuff. Yeah. But well. yeah, I mean, it's, it's way ben more beneficial than having them as an employee, for sure. Well, we were wondering if you had four calls a month, who's going to take that job? What do you do with that person? It just that's where the struggle was. Like, well, right. unless you, you had somebody that had all kinds of so many skills. things incorporate a need for a social worker. Well, I don't know. We got a number of them, Scott. So, <laughs> I, just, I just want to be really clear. Those four calls were actually true mental health crises, not like you know. Um, I got a problem with my neighbor that's not a criminal offense where maybe a social worker could intervene and it's not really a law enforcement type call for service. Or, or the kid not going to school. Uh, I mean, that's... Right. Yeah. So what are, what are schools doing throughout the state? How are they stepping up that piece? As far as... Mental health well, okay, issues so concerning you know, you the said kids. The, 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 kid not, the kid not coming to school. Okay. To me, that's a truancy thing. That's a school thing. It's not a. To me, it's not a policing thing. Well, this, not a this school has done. hired a second uh, social yeah. worker, counselor. The, year, the high school did Amanda. anyway. They had one, and now they right. have two. But they and they, um, you know. I, I don't, I mean, in, in my work and my time trying to work with the schools and getting more mental health training for their people, um, I don't think they're doing, I don't think they're doing a very great job of it. You know, just when we heard from the superintendent there, yeah, he said, well, he's been there six years and he's had to call the police five times over six years. I said, okay, that's roughly one, 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 call, one call a year. And then you know the, the 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 truancy thing or the 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 check is that what those social workers should be doing? They don't want to necessarily put a resource officer in the school because they said, well, um, some of the board members in the school board don't want to have a gun in school, if you will. That's that's how he put it. Um, my question is, well, does he have to, or he or she have to? Have a, have a gun in school to be a resource officer? I wouldn't suggest that that has to happen, you know? So it's I'm just kind of wondering how the school deals with it versus calling the police department who solves crime. I think it goes both ways. I think some of them they do on their own, but it sounded to me like some of them they have concerns about what was going on in the home also and felt like it may be better addressed with a law enforcement person. Or so should it be better addressed with more of a social worker because of what's going on at home? Um, you know? Yeah. Because I, I don't look at the police situation. department as a counseling agency for people who are having a domestic out. dispute other than when someone throws punches. You know? That's, 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 that's the part. That I don't look at that piece of policing personally of saying that their job is to be a social worker because Henry and Jane aren't getting along today. No. <laughs> You know? I think the bottom line is, and if you disagree, say so. I think the bottom line is, even though we may or may not think that an embedded social worker <laughs> would be 
a useful tool for the police department, would be great to have. Um, might get used a lot, might get used a little, whatever. The bottom line is, it's not really a concern for our budget. Well, it is. If you're going to hire somebody, that's a different piece than a contracted employee that or a service. And if if Clara Martin has the budget for it <clears throat> and is going to have the employees, that's different than if we have to have an employee and we have to right. account for it. So I think what we needed to get our head around was what does that look like and how is that piece of it met? And none of us had the answer last time. Right. So it was good that Kristen could give us it that It seems background. like there's a model out there that Kristen is talking about that towns sign MOUs with their mental health agency. And yeah, and some that, towns you know, kick in some, some of the money and some right. most of them don't. Right. I mean, or some of them raise their tax. You know, like, but if, but if there's a piece of money to be kicked in, to me it would be, it would fall under that line of contracted services, not a, not a line of, say, an employee benefits, blah, blah, blah. Right. right. Yeah. 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 It seems it would be, especially if we were just starting out down that road, it would make the most sense. The part of the, the part of the town sharing in the expense was the original idea um, that was floated, I can't remember which town now, but it was to show that collaboration really between mental health and law enforcement. That mm -hmm. was one of the big pieces of it was we don't want this to be a, people to perceive this person as a police employee and we don't, we, we, we also right. think that it's an important resource for the police and they're going to really benefit from it, so we want to show this collaboration. So if they, if they share in that, just like I mean, state police funds part of my position because they recognize the value of the training when you collaborate together. Um, after the first year, it was just Department of Mental Health. After that first year, we went to the state police and said, "Hey, look, you know, can you contribute?" And then we can include more of your people, like dispatchers and stuff. And they absolutely did and they have every year since for 10 years mm -hmm. so part of it is just if, if it's a small line item like 10 grand or whatever it is it's a sort of a show of I don't know good faith solidarity something <laughs> yeah all right so I think we've maybe it's something that simply shows up in the town budget but not part of the police that's what I was gonna say okay I don't know, because I, I think you're pleased with the ones we, that are going to be. It seems we need an awful lot more information. Of, what do you want to know? You talked so many different things, Kristen, um, that I'm trying to put all the details together in, in a number, and maybe that's my failing. I mean, do we have a number to put? Well, the number part, that's, uh, I don't know what the number would uh, be. That's okay. I don't, think anybody, right now, I don't think anybody has a number until they really understand it, but also understand who's exactly going to pay for it. Does it fall under the mental health agency? Is the state police going to pay for it? I mean, well, who's exactly going and to Joe, pay this, for it? So that reminds me, so the other thing that happened, so the state police guy who's embedded, like the town of Swanton and the town of... Uh, Milton, like some of the other towns have borrowed him on occasion, and that started happening in Burlington even with their um, street outreach people. The South Burlington PD was finding they were using Burlington street outreach people to solve some problems, and so they, the, I know that it, with state police anyway, they're like, we're going to let Swanton borrow them, we're going to let people borrow them, but if it gets to a point where so many hours are being spent over there, then we're going to go and ask them to, for some contribution. That has happened up there. And so they have a really nice relationship, and that, what, that's exactly what happened with Bennington and how they, they're now, they now see how beneficial it is, so they're going to come up with the funding to fund their own position after this year is, is their plan. Because the Shaftesbury guy was getting loaned to Bennington when he could go there, and that's how they did it. So I don't know if a shared thing with this with the Royalton Barracks and Randolph would would work. You know, if that would attract the right person to, you know, if they knew they would have the Randolph thing, you know, that may be a really good partnership. 
and it almost feels like it's a conversation with Claire Martin Center to say. Well, it's a, definitely a conversation with Claire Martin Center, but I'm definitely, you know, kind of hearing like, you know, especially like on the intern phase, the start out phase, if you will, that once that, that employee was found to go to the Royalton Barracks, that might be that conversation where now we are crossing into that realm in regards to what's this going to cost? How often do we utilize uh, this person? You know, and so on and so on and so on. And then we can further make those determinations on, you know, how do we staff or all the above. Just kind of thinking along those lines. Um, because we're kind of, you know, how do we do it now where we don't even know if it's going to end up working. Well, and sustain it. Because who's going to want to start a job that they think is going to end in a year, right? Correct. I mean, right. There's that Correct. piece as well, is, is to have some solid foundation Correct. Um, to assure them that they're going to have a job in three years. Correct. Yeah. So understanding all that, do we feel like the $10,000 number under contracted services is the right number? And should we be calling that out differently so it's a $10,000 allocation for mental health contracted services and then have other contracted services? Or is that... What other contracted only? services do you have? Uh, whatever... What would it be? I mean, any kind of contracts that we do with, like uh, on a school special function or uh, funders fair, that's a contracted service. Um, this uh, is on the expenditure side. Oh, so me. if you had Sorry. to hire somebody no. to move some... I don't know if you contract for somebody to move somebody to Springfield or oh, transport yeah or that really type of thing is that contracted no. to me it would be like you know your radio repair you know what I'm saying like, like, if, like, like that type of thing that would be a contracted service with whoever that takes yeah. care of your radio it's a mix of either telecom or technology though historically so we mm. so if that's your only contracted service we should just change the should call line it. items I don't think you should just throw a and number and, and make it a me mental, mental, mental health contracted services where you don't even I think know it is. Yeah. I think it shows a good faith thing and I think it would be attractive to Claire Martin and I mean I think it's a great starting point all right Get some direction on that one. Yep. Thank you. Narrow that one in. Can, okay. Scott, can I ask you a question? If these different models are going to require you to hire more staff, officers, in today's world, how difficult is it to hire people? So I've used the phrase recently on fishing out of a fished out pool. Uh, so it will be difficult. Okay. That, I thought that. <clears throat> well, it's really salary dependent, don't you think? I mean, Montpelier's had no problem because they're the highest paid uh, police force in the state. And they went to their city and they said, we need to, we, we can't find anybody, we have open positions. And so the town, the city, gave them a bigger budget so they could, mm -hmm. and so they're fully staffed. Mm -hmm. um, Capitol Police is looking for a chief at 139 grand. I mean, it's like nuts. Don't get any ideas. Don't How does that sound, Scott? No ideas. <laughs> well, we'll be honest with you. Scott, yeah. uh, would be awful. Yes. It's not even really policing. I mean, no. come on. They don't even have they don't even have patrol cars. Well, I think it's all up to each locality, though. You know, like like Burlington had a has a. St or a town or, or a city council or whatever they are up in Burlington and they kind of got in a little bit of a, you know, defund the police mode. And a lot of officers left and said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go elsewhere to work because these folks don't support me, you know. And so I think it's, it's all a matter of, you know, Montpelier, you know, said we're willing to raise wages and, and we like you and what happens? Well, people from the state police, people from even, maybe even Randolph police, you know, I'm going to go work for Montpelier, you know. So people move around. 
They move around quite a bit. Oh, they totally move around. Right. But, but right you know? now, it yeah. literally is whoever's offering the most money. Oh, it absolutely. Is the only it police is. officer you hire is when you steal from somebody else. Well, you it's know what? We have the same in, right in health care. The same thing, same thing all, happens. It's in everything. Yeah, absolutely. More, more so than it has yeah. ever, Poaching ever been. is the new advertising for physicians. Yeah. Yeah. That's our, you know. Yeah. You got to go out and target somebody and say, "Hey." Yep. My my last three poaches were from other hospitals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they were. You know. <laughs> okay. So, um, any other line items that people want to go into more detail? Um, this is on the existing district. And again, these don't include vehicles. Vehicles are or not. Or a building. Right, vehicles, and then you'll see it's highlighted when we get to the option three okay. there, the building one. What's the dispatch uh, expense? That is for our agreement with Barry City for those off hours, other hours. Okay. Yeah. And that's a fixed, that's not going to... That's based on our agreement with them, and that shouldn't change in the existing okay. model. We've held it constant in the next model, but if we got into a bigger force with more activity in the town-wide model, like, we put a number in there, but we'd have to go back to them and, and be able to say sort of what. And some of it's call bond independent, some of it's, you know, those other factors, but... And is, is uh, the, have we gotten the right number on the fingerprinting this time? <laughs> <laughs> on the income? Revenue? Oh, yeah. I, so Rose says challenge accepted, so. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what are you doing all the, you ask, what are you doing all the fingerprinting for? Only a second job, I think. And what are the reasons people have come back? I've had my gun yeah, and service and stuff. Because nobody's For, nursing, for uh, education, all those kind of parts and pieces, they're demanding that everybody, for their background checks, that they get fingerprinted. Oh, they changed yeah, the rules. Know. Joe, they changed the rules this year, last year. Do we have to get uh, m more often? You have to have the background check. So it used to be like once every 10 years. Now it's every two years or something for nurses. I mean, it's really increased the demand. Yeah, yeah. And I nobody else was doing them, so they like scarfed in all the business. I've only been, I've only been fingerprinted <laughs> once in life, and that was in 1977. And they said, "Yeah, I'll go in the Marines." You know, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's move on yeah. to the um, modified. So modified, yep, same deal with the green line numbers or work change. I mentioned earlier that we had to make the part-time officer hours match from that earlier one. So these slight changes in these three categories reflect that, since they're all. This changes the wage number, and then these two are based on that. So I think it works out to four or five thousand dollar difference between the two. Um, because we'd be adding more vehicles, more people, there's a slight increase in general insurance costs from the last version. Same thing with technology. That's where we pay for everything from handheld radios to mobile data um, units for the vehicles. Any other tech upgrades we need? Um, more vehicles, more people, the potential for more vehicle fuel use, everything, supplies. We titched up the advertising a little bit since we'd be hiring. That's probably still too low based on what we found from our extensive experience in hiring before poaching over the last two years as an organization. But it's a number that's in there. Um, and then the same thing with the telecom, which gets into cell phone and some other communication pieces. Contract service line is the same. Um, we'll be in all the models. The vehicle um, increases are up a little bit. Um, because we have extra vehicles, training and development's that same metric where we use $1,500 per employee. And then you'll see in the uniforms, this one's up from the prior version, and that's that $3,300 per because we've got the two spares, but in this model, we'd be adding two more people. Sure. So that's where you get that difference there. And then because we'd have more vehicles, more equipment, more people, we inched up the equipment <laughs> reserve transfer from 25 to 35 in this model. Um, do they use a, they use a uniform service? I'm sorry. Oh do you purchase all your staff their own uniforms or do you use like a uniform service like Unifirst or whatever? To clean them? Uh, no, it's all the officer to clean. Do your own laundry. Um, so we this don't have a contract with it for anybody for uniforms. Um, employees handle that. They can go through a Unifirst for some of the other departments or they do it on their own. Like, this modified district, this contemplates two additional 
Mm -hmm. FTEs. Yep. Right. And those would be officers. Yep. Not anybody else. Right. Two on top of what the the existing also has additional officers in it. Just to maybe I'll skip ahead real quick so we can okay. review that. Or, um, yeah. Like the next. So just after the, the budget pages, one. yeah, it shows sort of existing. We've got a footprint for about four full-time employees. So it's chief, two officers, and then rows. And then some part-time capacity. So when we get into the existing district model, we're talking six FTEs. So that's four full-time officers plus chief. Modified is six plus chief. Townwide is eight plus chief. We leave the part-time footprint the same in the three that we're looking at tonight. Um, and you can see our full-time count it basically goes up in twos. Um, Got it. On, on, your, on each one you have the COPS grant for 50000 as a as a revenue. So is that like a guarantee every year of getting it? If we got it, it would be a three-year, and then we'd have to phase in the rest of the expenses. And that's the model we can build out of it. We wanted to show it because we proposed using it before. It went from two times per year to one time, so you get one shot in the spring, I think it is now. Um, so if we were able to get that, we could be more aggressive with how we use it. There isn't sort of you have to use it in equal thirds. Um, you can kind of step it in. If you go back to some of the other models we had before the votes, we were using it more aggressively in year one, kind of tapering it off so that that cost was something that whoever was paying for walked into it more gradually. So we could do that. That might change some of the modeling in terms of if we assign specific officer costs to the COPS grant because it will cover those pieces for it. Um, and we might be able to lower some of those numbers as we get into it. We wanted to just hang on to it. You just have to apply, it be granted, and then it would be a three-year window. They had, they had used a COPS grant at one time yeah. point to uh, hire a resource officer for the school. Did, and then it, that that it went away, and they went to the school and said, hey, would you fund the position? And the school said no. They didn't mind getting it. And it was a COPS grant paying for it. And so that's why I'm wondering how stable is that $50,000 year after year after year to write in your budget if you don't know you're going to have it. Well, you don't get it forever. Huh? You don't get it forever. That's what I'm saying. So, so you get so it for three years. Three years. Three and years. then you don't get you, yeah. it. It gives you three years to, to build the support and put it in well, your budget. Is, so with it, then what happens when it goes away? We put it right in your budget. Your, your, your yeah. expenditure side goes up, but your yeah. expenditure right. side right. isn't going back down. Correct. Right, right. So now you're paying that yeah. fifty thousand dollars that you thought you. So there's a raise in taxes on those folks that are that that once that goes away. Correct. To keep yeah. that to keep that same program level. Correct. Right. Yep. And these colorful things are proposed schedules. Yep. Right. There's so we'd be open. We we'd be open till two. I mean, mm -hmm. we'd still do the seven to two business. So, I mean, those were just mock schedules yeah. all day long. Yeah. And there's a, you know, a whole bunch of tweaking. That was yeah. just to get that out the just door. Sort of kind of. Give a visual. Sure. Of Correct. why you would need eight officers or six officers. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, a cop grant doesn't even pay an FTE. Uh, I mean, you could. You go from broke, pay for the whole thing in a single year and have a little bit left over. But I think, trying to remember what the max award was, was it 150 or 175, something like that. So you've got three so years. But a 50 grand a year, that doesn't even pay for one year after you have that cop grant. No, it's easiest to think of it as an offset rather than a way to pay right, for right, something. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe yeah. by the end of three years, there'll be something else out there to apply for. Neil, did I jump ahead yeah. of you? Did you have a Not question? Not usually, but. Did you have a question for Trevor on your. More yeah. <laughs> yeah, just. On the part-time offices, you've got three, four, and 450 hours. Is that 450 for each officer? No, nope, that would be the total for each of them. We break them out into 250, 200, 150. Okay. I don't know All if right. the math worked there. I think it was off. But however you get there, we break them out. Okay. But that's for the total. Yeah. Because we have a, yeah. one individual who might be interested in working a couple hours on a Friday on a regular basis. So they help augment our capacity, okay. but it's not. That's that's all I needed to know. Thank you. And we don't necessarily budget for, we may use part-time officers. So this year we helped Royalton, because Orange County wasn't able to do it, Royalton covered Tunbridge Fair. They asked us to help. We plugged in some part-time capacity. So we may not necessarily budget for that, but you'll see it come out as a revenue and expense because we get paid for our time there at the agreed-upon rate, and it covers that expense. Okay. So the hours that you actually see might 
vary. It just depends. This is what we're thinking we'll pay for with our own. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have, actually have a line item for part-time officers? No, that gets baked right into that. Yep. Yeah. One sort of salary number. So I'm going back to the crop strength. Does crop strength have to be used on personnel or can it be used for equipment? No, it's going to be used on personnel. On personnel. It's usually specified as a new hire. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. You can't take a break and then apply and get it again for three years and pay for existing personnel. Right. If you're going to expand. Well, if you reduce your personnel costs, and then the other piece can, well, you reduce your personnel costs by, then you can spend that on equipment, if you will, because that's covering that that, that, that way. So yeah. I, just, I just didn't know how fine they were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the feds are particular, so we try to keep them right. at least not unhappy with us. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, you want to walk through the town line? Yep. Scroll down there, back too far. So, to go back to a question you had at the very beginning and the thing you received from Marty, in that earlier version, I had the hanging out here on line 19 was the $100,000 that's in as the general fund payment for service now. It's in the other two models. Um, if you go town wide, this all becomes a town wide expense, a general fund expense. So that payment is no longer needed. Where you'll see it show up essentially is up here in the taxes full assessment. Um, Can I make sure that I understand this? Mm -hmm. The $100,000, who pays it? We all pay it. Is that right? It's, it's in the general fund. Right. So it's part of my tax bill. Yep. Okay. And it works out. Uh, so not much, a couple of cents, I think, based on. Do you that literally spend down that line by the calls you do outside the district, or is it just kind of thrown into the budget? I, I think there's some of the discussion is about how to set that model up if we retain it both this year and beyond. And so the Woodstock model is the one we've talked about in terms of there's a defined number of hours. I mean, they go so far, they've got separate governmental structures, so it's a right. little different. Um, but maybe that's a model we can use where we define our define vehicle use and we try to spend that down as part of our, our sort of So that's how, parameter that's how it was originally set up. I was on the select board to, to when do it was which. So it was it was originally set up because um, state police made a call to scratch crew and they had to go out of district. So they were supposed to on those hours would be spent against that line. The idea was is because that the, not in the police district, the 65 percent of the of the money in that comes from outside the district. That's the, roughly the ratio. 35 percent of the grand value or whatever the grandless value is inside the district, 65 percent out. So knowing that that was the model, then at, at today's dollars, because the dollars back then were like 15 or 20 thousand. Today's dollars is 100 thousand dollars. At a hundred thousand dollars, sixty-five thousand dollars is being there for them to use outside the district. That was why when Scott said that one meeting that he was stopping by up at up at Gifford or up at Morgan Orchards, if you will, I said, "Okay, so did you put your expenditure towards that line?" Because that's how the select board set it up at that time. Okay, um, I'll be transparent and say I didn't vote for it because I saw it as a police district expansion. However, it passed and it's been in the budget ever since. It also paid for the sheriff's department, which at that time we had like, out of that 20,000, we had like an $8,000 for the sheriff's department that, that was doing whatever patrols they were doing outside, outside the district. So that's how, that's how it initially, initially worked and then it's ballooned to where it is now. So that's, where, that's when I come up and say, hey, $65,000 is already available to be spent outside the district no that's not how it's in there now that might have been how it was so the town had mm -hmm. a contract with orange county sheriff mm -hmm. even when we had our own pd and they did patrols throughout the town where right. it was but for the majority of that it was outside of the district so we would have um, speeding issues we would have yeah. you know challenges somewhere sure. and the the call would be made, Orange County would come and help do that. Then when we got eliminated the police department and contracted with Orange County, 
the need was still there for outside that number jumped up to 25,000 it, it's a general fund expense but the whole 25,000 was under contract with Orange County to mm -hmm. do for the coverage and things that they did outside when we put the hundred thousand dollars in the budget this year to do it it's the full hundred thousand for outside of the district okay. the money does come from the general fund which means everybody in the town helps pay for, pay for that it's in the tax rate for it mm -hmm. but it's right. the money is there and it's as a contract for service for what's needed outside of the town so 65 what i'm saying that was sixty-five thousand of that comes from outside the district because that's the rough ratio the of it. Oh, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? So, so that's the rough ratio. And so sixty-five thousand is already presently paid for outside the district on that hundred thousand on that hundred thousand yeah. dollars from the revenue source side. But the expenditure you know? side, the full hundred thousand is there to right. be spent outside of right. The right, right. The now, the, the thing is, is quantifying what the cost is for leaving the district at present with the state police coverage already there as well. So how much a year does, and that's why I'm trying to get finer with those numbers, how much is a year is the Randolph Police Department actually spending in time outside the district? And does that $65,000 already cover that? It very well could. It maybe it doesn't. I don't know. At the time when many predecessors before you, right, at, 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 that, at that time, they had put a number out there because they had actually at that time they had a separate sheriff's department for eight thousand dollars and that was just to kind of bolster up what may be needed from inside and at the time they didn't spend four thousand dollars going outside the district of what was documented charged against it that type, that type of thing early like on that. they didn't but i think they as we got towards the end it, they started doing a much better job of expending it because the demands starting you know you got the demands higher for but it was a lot of you know, patrol so so if you look at how many times maybe that Scott's having to go out there not that he has to I mean you can always tell the state please sorry we're shorthanded just like you are um, you know you're gonna have to cover it yourself however the times you are thank you for doing what you do um, the times that you are what does that add up to on what does that dollar value add up to and is the sixty-five thousand dollars still cover that or are you spending a hundred grand outside the district? Or are you spending twenty grand? You know, so what's that real number? To give an to give an idea of, of, of where that is. You stay into the just in the district model, um, you know, where it is right now, and keep it the same. Because I don't know if Marty quite understands it correctly, but 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 but, but keeping it keeping it the same, um, would that Hundred thousand, or, or should I say, sixty-five thousand outside the district, cover the need. Yeah, I mean that the goal is to set it up to provide the right amount of coverage and to find the right assignment of costs. We've been at this since February, so to the extent the committee is looking for resolute, solid trend line answers on anything, we don't have it. And we just we haven't existed that long, so some of that plays into. Like multi-year trends and accounting for things in ways they've never been accounted for. So that's why we go back to what are the models that are in place other places. Woodstock's so probably the cleanest example for what we've got going on based on what we've looked at with some of the benchmarks. And so we try to build out from there what looks like a footprint for that dollar amount. What does that essentially buy you? And we then translate that with officer capacity into that level of service. And it wouldn't necessarily be a dedicated officer who only does that. It might be an hour footprint. So then that way it maintains some flexibility and response both in and out. Um, so if somebody's tied up on something and there's a second call outside of the district, we can go and cover that. Or if somebody's tied up inside, you can get that. Some, the, some of the data you, you provided, and again, thank you for the data you provided, some of, some of that data that you provided showed how many hours were being spent on calls. Right? And so looking right. at that and saying, okay, these are the ones out of the district, is how many hours and how much does it cost per hour per call? You know, mm -hmm. on, on an average, well, like I say, ne it's never going to be finite enough to, to, you know, one person gets paid more than the other, blah blah blah. You know, you know, it's more okay. So what is that? What is that real cost? And what is that costing? Costing against say that hundred thousand dollars. What is that? What is that costing? I don't you know, think you know, costs so. or time spent is ever going to be the metric though to determine both cost and service. I think that's mm -hmm. one of the things we covered because it's way too variable. 
yep. it's not well tracked and that's everybody has that same problem so it's I think it can be instructional or informational but when we think about how to assign costs anywhere even what's the right footprint for the district time for call isn't because it doesn't also account for the times that you are there in a purely preventative stance so when just your availability your presence that time in between because we're not logging the patrol times in between mm -hmm. what impact does that have and so you'd have to take that as one piece and then try to build out what's a what's that cost model and so we're using what is the standard municipal framework where we're trying to figure out what's the need what's the number of hours how much does that get us in terms of hours of coverage can we put it in the places where we have different needs for different things at different times can we figure out some ways to pay for it in this model when because you've got more officers you can see we can ordinance fines go up a little bit that's because we're able to do speed enforcement in different places say contracts for service go up because maybe we're able to provide something for Braintree or Brookfield that offsets some of our costs and so it's a we're mixing and matching it's you know we're making a stew rather than but, but um, so yeah. help, help me understand, like right now, state police provide some level of coverage to the town. Do we have any idea what what that staffing level looks like? Not from numbers, but like how about how many hours of service they're providing us? Do they give us any of that? Here's my concern. We have been pounding the table hard in a lot of arenas of um, unfunded mandates from the state or things we're picking up that the state used to pay for and whatnot. And right now we have a level of police service in the town that is the state's responsibility. And under this town-wide model, we're looking at letting them walk away from that and we'll, we'll be taking that on and paying for it and having to staff it and cover it. And I just, that goes against everything we have been like really hammering home with a lot of different state agencies, you know, even like we get all these grants that the town has to play a role in. We have no reason to play a role in it, but we have to commit staff time, we have to commit resources, we have to commit to all these things for these grants that, do they benefit the community as a whole? Yes, probably at some extent, but it's at the burden of our employees. And now we're looking at saying, okay, state police we're going to let you off the hook you're just going to back us up now we're going to cover this and we're going to take on this expense and this staffing and and this equipment which is you know like what are we we're shifting we're like it just feels like we're constantly saying we don't want you know stop why are you making us do it and now we're saying hey bring it on and <laughs> we'll take all this and pay for it and staff it it's just contrary to um, I don't we... disagree with you, but on the flip side of that is, you know, what's the cost of the public safety? Um, because if state police literally can't respond because they don't have enough people, um, you're putting your public at risk. Uh, that, um, there's two sides. I mean, right now, the Royalton Barracks is at half staff, literally half of what they're supposed to oh, have. But that and, means... I, and I know, and you would like to say, that's not my problem. The town of Randolph is your coverage area. You need to take care of it. And I don't disagree with that. But what about the public <laughs> oh, <but laughs> who's suffering because so there is nobody to cover? But we're saying we're and fishing out of the same pond and trying to get them, and they can't get them. It doesn't mean we're going to get them. But as soon as we say we're going town wide, mm -hmm. guess what? Mm -hmm. We're only going to have three or four officers to cover the entire town, and then where are we going to be? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I know. It's a slippery slope. And it is. We better Absolutely. be careful what we're asking for. We talk about the public safety piece of it. However, what you, what you haven't really kind of talk, talked about is that the people calling to expand the district, I'll leave it at that. Marty Strange is one of them, says it's not fair. Um, and others, not, not that I'm afraid to say it publicly, but I don't think that I need to. People know who people are. Um, no one from outside the district is calling for this. It's all been called for from, from inside the district because they saw a budget that was higher, convinced people that, well, we can, you need to do it for cheaper because we're going to vote down this budget. And oh, by the way, as a side thing, we want to expand to the town so the rest of the town can pay for this. 
We haven't seen extraordinary policing problems outside the district, and, and of those ones are the most dangerous, the state police, in an open letter, said they respond. So that, that's where, like I said, that the numbers come in. So to say that there's a public safety risk, well, there's a public safety risk falling on the railroad tracks, too. Uh, but I, but I, look, I look at it in, in, in that certain light and said, no one from outside the district has called for this. I haven't, heard, I haven't seen one letter to the editor. I haven't seen anybody that says, you know what, crime is really bad on the Davis Road, and we need to increase this police district. That's not what I've heard. You know, you know what, what we're hearing more so is how do we spread this wealth? And how do we spread it to some people that are very large landowners that's going to put a huge tax burden on farmers? I, I, look, I look at it and say, who's calling for this? He says it's fair. Well, you know what's fair also? I haven't seen the sewer pipe come to my house. I haven't seen the water pipe come to my house. I have my own water and sewer. Randolph Center does not have trash barrels that are picked up by the town. Yeah. Yeah, they're picked up down here. East Randolph does not have trash barrels picked up by the town. So if we want to talk about fair, right, they have recreation down in the middle of town. No one's giving the, the, the kids a ride from South Randolph to go to the recreation. Right, right. So you know, we play this little fair game that Marty Strange, because I, I take his letter for exactly what it's worth. He wants, it, he wants to expand the district and other people to pay for a safe spot. That's exactly, that's exactly how I see it, and, I, and I'm, I'm quite open about it and have been open about it. Can you guys explain how you came up with, because uh, I missed the, oh, okay. the little half hour or uh, whatever, however long you were on after I left last week, when you created this expanded district with the red lines on this map? So we, basically, what we did is... It just made sense, Kristen. I see. Well, it doesn't really... No, it, no, it doesn't. It's just really so, but the idea was to cover, it looks like VTC, and then... Uh, no, we didn't go to VTC. Oh, we stopped the, the, um, the stop sign. Stopped yeah. the, at the, the intersection. intersection there. But so there was a. It would cover it, McDonald's, the barn, Morgan Orchards, the new hotel that's going to be a nightmare for police. Um, things like that. It's the church is going to be. Oh, I do. Yeah, because it's going to yeah. be homeless and totally. FSU housing. No, it is not. Extended stay rooms with kitchenette. Okay. So that's the chief and I know what it's going to be. <laughs> so what we did was. Uh, in the hearings and all the stuff, a lot of what folks were saying was these were the areas that needed the services more okay. or were, yep. were calling for them. And uh, so those areas that, that are added in are the areas that were being talked about during the different meetings and the public stuff. Yep. And then the listener's office said they would appreciate it if we would include entire parcels instead of portions of parcels because they have to calculate manually what that rate is which I think once you get it once it's not you know you got it you just got to redo your calculation but um, so the first go at it that we asked Trevor to do was to include the entire parcels so we could see what it looked like okay just to, to give us kind of a starting spot to say this is and then it seems reasonable if we were covering Shaw's that we just go to town line. Oh, that's that's down. the town line. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And do a loop. Right. right. So the yeah. loop. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because the lister is impacted because the these property owners are the ones who would be taxed on it. Right. Mm -hmm. If you do the entire parcel, it's pretty easy because yeah. the data is yeah. already there. Yeah. If you do uh, just a tricky. distance from the road, they have to just calculate what that area is yeah. and okay. put it into a kind of a formula okay. to, do, to do it that way. But it can be done. And this expanded district is reflected in this uh, second. Oh no, existing. If it's the modified, it's the modified, modified, the modified yeah. right. modified, okay, which requires voter approval, mm -hmm. correct, to modify the district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. voters yeah. get involved. Uh, okay, well, they yeah. could get involved in the town wide one too. Correct, right. Yeah, they right. I mean, the voters okay. are involved all the way around. Right. Right. Well, Trini, right. you've made right. a really good point. I'm yeah. concerned about this about town wide. I mean, besides Joe's point of these people in Fish Hill don't need it, but um, about if we said we're going town wide, then 
what if we still only had four officers to cover the whole town? That, They're covering the whole town. Yeah, right. So right. we're now the primary. Because we're not going to be anywhere near the highest paying police department in the state. Wait a minute. No. I thought if you go town-wide, you're talking additional offices. But you can't if you find them. If you, you can get find them. them. But where are you going to find if them? If you can well, get okay. practicality and that's that. what, why I brought the thing up to the question up to Scott. It, we may not be able to go town-wide. So at the very least, we're back Maybe to another the extension of you know, what we have. When, and modify it. Possibly. Yeah, you Possibly. either I mean, what you, you either add yeah. officers to your existing area or you add officers and expand to the areas that you're going to a lot anyway. Yeah. When when the village was originally set up, Route sixty six was just a hinterland, wasn't it? There was nothing up there. There was no McDonald's, there was no <laughs> barn. Right. Nothing. The Morgan Arches wasn't there. Correct. You know, all this stuff has come in and the, the, the hotel has come in. Right. And, and Joe, you talk like about the farmers. I ride around there and most of the farms I see are closed. Mm -hmm. No, there's still quite a few operating farms. There's 21 dairy farms in Randolph still. Let's not um, stray too far off our But there's, you know, there's other, other large properties. Well, what I'm more getting at is that we don't have we don't have the crime that the, that, that the village may, may have. Is Morgan? You know, what, no. what tends to bring no, crime in a tax agreement is commerce. Oh, okay. that limits it. Right. So where your business sectors of the that are the town is okay. where you tend to yeah. tend to see yeah. where your crime where your crime is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'm not so, trying to be confrontational with your children. Sure. Sure. I, 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 and I'm open. I just mentioned that, but. I know in the expanded, the area that we're talking about an expansion, um, I know from having conversations with Scott that they run into crime up in that area, so up in the barn or up in the, the park and ride. I don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with you that, that they might okay. have some shoplifting or someone might break into a car at the parking lot. I, I don't, I don't dis disagree with you okay. at all. But I also know that the state college provides their own security. That's, that's right. right. You said that tonight. Right. Provide any, and he doesn't have, not that he doesn't need the police, but he doesn't need them often. The barns provide their own security. The what? The barn or breakers? I call it. The gas the, whichever station, one you want to call. They it. have their own security, yes. right, right? I didn't know that. Yeah. Right, right. They just did it. That's new. They right. just oh, okay. hired them. Gifford has made the, has made the choice not to provide the, the, their own security up there, but Gifford has their own security here in town. But that that's that's again the private entity. That's that that's a, that's their own choice of, of of where they where they want to be with it. But beyond that, what expansion has had happened beyond that? Can we, really nothing. Um, when you did I, I'm this, listening. I hear you, Joe. Right, right. Thank you, dear. When we did this map, just to say, like, if we did a modified district, what's that going to look like? Um, I, I think we have to have the conversation about whether it includes the entire parcel or not. And the one that just keeps coming back to my mind is the the one that has the little tiny piece of land at the bottom of Stock Farm Road, mm -hmm. and that is triggering an entire parcel out the Stock Farm Road to be in the district. Um, yeah, I slid it off a little bit here, but that would probably loop some of this in too. Yeah, it goes out and takes in quite a quite a slug of land there, but. But is that more of the Brunswick School, uh, who provide their own parts and pieces? Uh, I, I mean, don't they're... know if it was theirs or not. It highlighted the day we were looking at it, and it was really funky shaped. Right, I remember that. Yeah. Last week. And it went all the way down, and then it went up for this way, and it had a little piece over here. And um, I understand the listers like the idea of. The entire parcel being in, I just you know, if we're going to look at what the expanded district would look like, I think we've got to look at kind of what does that make sense? Um, <laughs> we're gonna get asked that question of why is this 
why is this the kind of what you went with? And does it make sense to you to expand the district, given the calls that you respond to? I haven't compared this to the all that data that we got with the. I'm already doing it. Uh, it pretty You're much already, already doing, doing it. it. Um, yeah. um, I'm, ha I'm dealing with calls at the barn. You know, yeah. it's not, they don't have around the clock security. It's from like nine at night mm -hmm. to maybe two in the morning. Yeah. Um, and so anything during the day, uh, it's a drug activity place right now. It's just a, a, a stop and go. Um, the park and ride, again, you know, it's not that far away from the barn. You know, you go out, stretch your legs, go up 66, make a turn around uh, in the park and ride, come back down through. Uh, I'm currently, what we're doing right now, we're already so driving through the expanded district or re uh, expanded boundaries as what we're already doing right now. Uh, you know, going south on 12, we're already going out towards Beanville to make a loop back to come into town. Yeah. You know, we're passing off Henderson Drive, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, but we're still dealing with that with because we're getting called from uh, state police. Can you help us uh, respond to this? You're cl you're closer. That's so that factored into your discussion last week on Big and the Smith. <coughs> yeah. And it makes perfect sense too because we we've, we've grown so much. I mean, with all that we deal with, I would think like what you just said to figure out a way. When we have the 100,000 that goes into the general fund that we just talked about, is there a way to increase that without um, figuring out the zoning parcels to increase the coverage that you do without um, taxing? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, is there a generic way to do that? You don't right? Like, if that. you're going to say this is part of the district, it needs to be part of the district. Right. And I it just, needs to get as part of that. Like if we're gonna say you're you're not part of the district, then the response should be limited in in what they do. Some of what we heard was that there's a lot of calls up that way and there's a lot of calls down by shot down to shop. Right. You know, so those entities ought to be part of paying the tax that pays for that police department given that they use the services quite a bit. Right. I was just trying to think of an alternative way to get the funding yeah. to do the expansion. But, and I think the problem with that is then you're asking the entire town to pay for you are those businesses piece yeah. versus. I think it has to be a separate vote, the vote from within that, that that expansion area. I think those people ought to have their own say so of what they want. I think it's yeah, but what we got to figure out is what we're going to put out there. Well, right, right. Like but once once you come up with that, what's well, out there? I think it should be a separate vote of, of those. Whether even if it's town wide, I think those that are not in the present district now should be able to vote separately on is this what we want or what we don't want. Yeah. And I think be, that's sort of what the um, discussion is about what the merger document. Trevor, did you say the the hundred thousand yeah. is well, it's history? It's pennies. Yeah. Right. As far as. Yeah. Somebody's tax rate. Right? Yeah, well, it's somebody's tax bill. Yeah, yeah. Less than two cents. Okay. Scott, do you have any confidence at all that if the district was not changed, but that come fiscal year twenty-five, you have the money to add on two more officers? How confident are you that you could get two more officers? Pretty confident. Pretty confident. Uh, you know, I've, honestly, with these kind of conversations, I've already started, you know, poaching, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, you know, kind of irons in the fire. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of officers that uh, care about this area, like this area, um, you know, they're, they may be willing to jump. May. May. Uh, but you know that's also going to be you know is the price right? That's going to be the biggest sell factor. Do you? I I do not know what you and Jean Miguel and Chelsea are making. Do you feel that it's competitive? Uh, it's on uh, kind of the lower side of mid. Mm -hmm. okay. 
could could we get, um, keep the present village, but just add <clears throat> the lower part of it, show us and that part of it, and not add up and through, not add up above. It can do anything. They they tried that once, Neil. That one failed in a boat. Once it failed already. pretty bad, yeah, because Shaw's um, was trying to push it as Shaw's came in and. I forget the name of the store was in. I think it was Agway or something like that that was yeah. in there before. Um, the IGA. Store. IGA, right, the Agua store. I think it's awesome. So, so uh, <laughs> they tried that. The problem was is they tried it on that end of town and also included, if I'm not mistaken, Tatro Hill and all of that. And Shaw's didn't have a vote. They're, they're, they're a company. They, didn't, they don't have a vote on their, on their own property. And so it was kind of pretty soundly defeated because it was others that you know the homeowners that can vote oh i think that's part of what the challenge is going to be still like we're a what lot of these lines are picking up businesses what are we looking right. at right so, so this is just to sort of show you the shots if you just did what neil was talking about you didn't do the tetro hill attempt like joe was talking about you're really talking about these two right here and this would basically be all that gets at it. And then you've got a contiguous run because the district right. ends in that right. giant yeah. map right about here. So you'd be adding the substation. Mm -hmm. So you don't get Beanville Road at all. Nope, you add this. I don't even know what's in there right now. That building. And then it's for the shows. Storage. That's, but that would, that would be that. Um, But even if, if you had Beanville Road and you were to vote that separately, none of those folks that, or should I say that industrial park and LED dynamics and all that, they can't, they can't vote on that. It's only the properties that are around it, you know, you know what I mean, that like they can vote on it, managers drive yeah. and, you know, and, a, and, a, and a few small agricultural spots, they can vote on it. So it's. Again, when they tried to explain it to Shaw's, that was that was the difficulty, is because you know, I don't know. I don't personally. I don't know if I had a place to bank there. <laughs> no, they didn't have that. You know, you know, it's just my own thoughts. You might, you might want to see that. But <laughs> you know, it's like you don't have any police protection. You got a bank out there, right? Right? You know. Can you? Where's the gray? It's be a rock. No, <laughs> the gray is a different unidentified category. It doesn't in this context doesn't mean anything. It's just there. But as you can see, that's the police district line. So where do we go from here? I think we've got to decide um, if what the boundaries are that are there now on these, if that's what we want to look at for that modified version. Um, and I think some of the question was if we could put this to an, a tax impact what that was going to do and we've got to we've got to know what these boundaries are to be able to do that analysis because our I yes. mean what we're going to do is make we're going to come to some consensus about what we're proposing to the select board well we're going to go out with the to the public with the three options first oh that's first. the three okay and get well, the input um, so we said the select board first. I, I, I thought we went to the select board first. I thought we went to the select board. I thought it was going to the select board. So, so yeah, our report was going. Our to the report board. does go to the select board, but we're supposed to be getting public input on this. So we're going to have to go out with the three options and hear from the public. And we've said that we weren't going to do it yet because we didn't have the answers and we didn't have the information. Okay. So on, um, on um, August 14th in the paper, and I kind of sent it out to you folks. Um, uh, on August 14th in the paper, it was saying we were going to go. We were going to go to a public forum. We just didn't have the information, enough information yet, because um, I'd call for, for having a public forum. And I'd ask for that from the, from the beginning. That we invite the folks that, especially that are not in the district, to understand what they may have to pay for. What's the tax impact? You know, what, what, what's your interest in, in doing this? We brought in entities thus far. We brought in like Clara Martin and Safe Safe Line and the hospital and that and and the school. Is, it, is any one of them going to say we don't really care to have a police? Of course they're not. That's 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 not that's that's not even feasible. We have gotten some numbers from them, 
right? And, and, I, and I, have, I have the numbers here, like the hospital said they've called five times in the six years he's been there, and the, and the school says he's called six times or whatever that is in the time he's been there. So we've gotten some numbers from them, you know, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna say, no, we don't ever gonna need a cop. You know? no, no one wants police. Until they need them. Yeah, exactly, until right? they need them, just like the fire. <laughs> no one wants police. No, we all love firemen. Yeah, everybody uh, loves no, just like nobody wants to have a fire. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what I had. Until you need them. It's a, it, they're a necessary evil. <laughs> they are. Well, those that, that I that I at least uh, that, that contact me, and I hear from it often, say I'm satisfied with what the policing is that I have presently. So what we were talking about was the process next, and so we we've got to kind of define this modified version so we can know what those impacts are and what that looks like. And then we've got to put together the three scenarios and have an opportunity for the public to learn about what they are and have some input into it. So uh, are we... Then we make a recommendation, put a, together a recommendation and to have the public. To the to the input. Input. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was the other way around. Me too. That's all right. All right, so, so, so are we settled on the, this, I mean, have we all agreed that this, if we were going to do a modified district, that this is what it would be modified to? No, we came up with a little, some direction for Trevor and asked him to, do, to draw it out for us. Yeah, okay. And that's what that is. Okay. So, so I would like to propose that we cut off that Route 66 like that we had it on. And just keep the bottom. And discuss the southern end where Shaw's is some more. Scott. I, I like both of them because if we're going to go for it, why not just say it right. and then let the voters say, nope, that's too far and not. But I think that you have a lot of activity up there. Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I yeah. like it or don't like it, but I'm thinking about what might work and what might not yeah. work. Scott, I didn't mean it personally when I said no one wants police. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me. Save. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I think some of what we were coming up with was what we heard in those pushbacks of the police budget for the different things, but also looking at where the demand is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, can you? justify that expansion in those areas and I think you can I think that our question more is going to be like what does where do those red lines actually get drawn and should we be drawing them on prop on full property amounts and having this funky shape or should it be we're going X number of feet from the center right. of the road or we're going to right like mm -hmm. what is that I think we have to look at both of them yeah, so we kind of have what we asked for here, right. right, which is the full... Those follow the property lines, lines. correct, Trevor? We think that has the one that goes all the way back one. over here and has right. the multiple. Right. Um, stuff. Wait, on the water or yeah, just in the sewer This one, we just have this little nub right there. Mm -hmm. You have to hook on to the water or the sewer system if you're within 100 feet of the pipe. So you have to what? You have to, you have to connect onto the, the water. Or? And the sewer, yeah, let's in the select we use whatever we're supposed to by ordinance connect on to the sewer line or the water line if you're within a hundred feet of the of the pipe. So if you use that as a sort of a model that and you have a big huge property funky shape like like, like Trini is saying, that most of your land is just often somewhere then maybe it's within 100 feet of Route 66. I think this is a parcel you know? that if we were talking about that we weren't sure yeah. um, kind of what to do with it. And this is all one property owner. And that little tiny piece in the top right, right here. top yeah. left, is yeah. the only one that actually touches 66. I see. But it pulls that entire parcel in as being right part there. of the police district. So if that's the case, and there's somebody all the way in the far mm -hmm. southeast corner of that property that calls in, you know, and the state police say, "No, oh, sorry, you're in the police district." You know, that's you're now running all the way out there for that call. 
And how much of a nightmare, Scott, do you know how much of a nightmare this, or maybe Judy, you do it, for dispatchers? Yep, that's yeah. what I was yeah. thinking. I mean, that would be, it's <laughs> going to be really tricky, right? Mm -hmm. it it can you really exempt tricky. this one property or not? Well, it could be that you just, this one, you draw the, the nubbin around there just to, and that's essentially what I've shown in. But that's the school, right? Not to school. So that's like school. Yeah. That's how I did these lines when I set this up. It's just you can see that little corners cut off there. <coughs> but we can't forget that the, the state police and the local and Scott they they help each other. So no matter where the boundaries are, they're they're helping each other right now when one can't get. So I mean you're defining it and trying to expand it, but they aren't going to just say no. You, I can't go there because it's not in there. We're not as worried right. about them. We're worried about the poor person that gets the 911 call, figuring mm -hmm. out who they're supposed to send it to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the dispatcher. All right, I see what you're saying. I was just thinking the opposite. No, it's going to be no. really tricky. Like who they're supposed to call, local or not. Yeah. 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 I got you. Yeah. It's about response connectivity. You could consider what we jokingly referred to as a lollipop option. Up 66, so the corridor gets drawn into. Before you bowl wrap me, just let me finish, and then get behind somebody. Um, so that you, we would draw essentially within the right of way of 66 up until you get here to where you have the activity, and then you create sort of those boundaries around the area to which we're responding. So but these folks. How are, much are we reacting to? Like there's activity yeah. right now, right in the Morgan Orchard. Uh, parking lot. Is that what you're pointing to right there? Uh, it, that would be I mean, up in this know, upper reach right here. I mean, yeah. like. And then we talk about the moat, the hotel that you say is going to be uh, like right a drug den. Um, I mean, you know, every, I mean, the, the stuff changes, right? There's going to be some other time we're going to have a skateboard park and there'll be, you know, trouble down, I don't know, wherever. Like, I don't want to be reactive just because right now we're having this problem up, up that way. Well, it's where your development is right now. Right, it's right. what I'm, you know, if you look at what you got going on, you got your McDonald's, you got your yeah, gas yeah, station, yeah. you got your Gifford expansion, the hotel. Piece um, of property. There's right, a few other we're talking about yeah, um, yeah, going one. up there. I think that's okay. where your development yeah. is. That's what it's like. Right. Can, can the issue be looked at again in a couple of years? Yeah. Sure. It can in a couple of months after we make the decision, even right? Well, There's no true. timeline on it. Maybe, <coughs> maybe all kinds of issues will come up up in the hill way of it. The question I have, like, yeah. like Gifford and their taxes on Morgan Orchard. So they they worked out some kind of a deal a few years back when they were building that because they thought they weren't going to be taxed. But they end well, up being taxed. You right. might know a whole lot more than I do about that. Well, about the town that. has the ability to work with a developer and give them a a break on their town taxes and so that's what's they For have an agreement the same as led and some of them yeah mm -hmm. it's usually a 10-year period uh in most <coughs> cases we allow them to not pay for the first mm -hmm. five years and right, then they right. kind of come into it so they pay 20 percent does the hotel have that kind of an arrangement uh they have not come in no. so the question i have with that deal so gifford say is in that deal right now how does that affect their ability to pay police taxes because they're running, that they're on that deal? Does that affect it at all? They still have to pay the full load of police taxes that, that, that might be encumbered upon them? Or do they get that sort of deal? I don't remember if their agreement is for an amount or a percentage. It's a percentage. So it would float at least with whatever the... Well, okay. the police that tax is, is a whole on. separate tax. Right, it's a separate tax now. You know, you, you're taxed on your property tax, and then you have a separate police tax. So, police tax is a separate tax from property tax at present right. in the district. Expanding well, the district would still make it a separate tax for policing. Mm -hmm. So, that's, that's just kind of a um, thought. Or, or are you going to see it a select board meeting here and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, we didn't sign up for this. But right, I, you know, I, you know, I think you know. what we would have to do is have somebody look at that because mm -hmm. I believe what mm -hmm. we classified as is municipal taxes. So town, the town level. So you can't exempt them from the state tax portion. Right, so right. the state portion of your property taxes, we don't have any say. Right, right. So we're only talking about the portion that is town. 
and I think it says that their municipal tax will be X percent of what's new. So the first, I, I think it's pretty close to LED dynamics, one even. So we, you have five years that you waive it, and then you gradually go up. Gradually go up. Tax and stabilization. You're 10, they're paying right. the full right. free. Basically. Yeah. All right, but for purposes of actually getting to eat supper tonight, um, <laughs> where are we going right now without getting into the weeds of who's Well, doing I guess. What? Uh, we need to let Trevor know what we, where we think the red line ought to be drawn. So it would be good. I, I would today. suggest property lines. The property lines of where? Of this? Of the um, properties that border 66 and the southern Even part of 12. So yeah, that's, if that's, that's what we're going to do. Right. So that would so include that weird. Right. So that if somebody owns a 20 acre parcel that butts up against 66, but they're on the back 10 acres and they have an emergency. <laughs> I mean. Right, right. Most of those right now seem to not have, so the ones that kind of extend back don't have anything on them. Um, okay. So as a practical matter, I don't think we'll run into that. Um, so we're going no, 66 but they're going to be and 12. Mm -hmm. All properties right. abutting those two roads. Mm -hmm. and, you know, if, if their house is say fifty so yards off of Route sixty six, but they yeah, but they own that's what that is. Yeah. you know one hundred and twenty acres in the back of it, and they're going to be taxed yeah. based upon one hundred and twenty mm -hmm. acres in their house. Mm -hmm. There we go. If there's no one back there, to all woods or, or field or whatever it might be, you know, so it puts a pretty good burden on them. It does get mm -hmm. yeah. the folks on so this road that kind of comes up follows along here some of these properties because they abut on the back edge. There are times you could be going around Sunset or whatever this is called right here. And what would it, it would it look like if like with Joe's idea of going you know from the so much from the center of so the road? See those on the Sunset? You come up here. There's a few houses that would be in the district now because of this frontage. Mm -hmm. But the structures are sort of off, or these wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you drew a corridor, yeah, you just would kind of come up straight line, and it would be you know that percentage of value along the way. But then they're going to say, "Well, my land's there, but there's nothing that takes place there. That's just the you know, right. They have steep bank and whatnot, so I got to pay into the police budget, but I'm not going to get any service." So you know you're gonna, we're going to get it both ways. Mm -hmm. We're going to get the one that oh, yeah. says yep. you, you get you service know, every time you I, drive into town. You get service. Right, but I'm I'm just saying like when we look at how we draw these, if we yeah. said we're going to go a certain, those folks are going to be like, well, why did you do that? I'm mm -hmm. not in it. My mm -hmm. house is over here. I've got this. So it's a you're kind of in a catch twenty two. Somebody's going to bitch no matter what. Right. We're not well, going to get around true. that, but right. like. Right. How do we get it to what makes the most sense and reasonable? And provides the best service. Mm -hmm. yeah, it makes the most sense, provides best service. So, so we're going to. I think we should increase the 100000 the <laughs> Which is what I was thinking. You know, and then the end, eliminate the Route 66 yeah, section. Yeah, then you don't have to. You're but just increase it. the outside district line contribution. Item. Right. But, but then you've got the entire out of the district. The entire town is then paying for the service to these entities that are driving the service need. And so if, okay, if a lot of your stuff is coming in and you're going to Shaw's, then that plaza, they ought to be paying into the district directly and helping foot the bill for that versus it going into a general fund expense. Okay. So we're going to go down 66 and 12, the properties that have bought it, call it. Okay, let me just, I'm good with the polygon, so just, we can draw whatever you want, but so I'm going up 66 again to around the interchange or all the way up? All the way up. To the intersection or to get the TC? Uh, to the intersection. And then down 12, still all the way to Beanville, or town line and back? All the way to the town line, yep. So, let me just see. Although if we go to the town line, you have no place to turn around, but I bet you can figure it out. 
<laughs> turns about, be turns about to laugh. So those you know said he's going to be getting they make tight turns, right? <laughs> we'll turn about. He's start to go. <laughs> we'll turn about to the end. Go up to the end, up to where Floyd's store is. Up to the intersection, yeah. 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 So I keep this corridor, lose the little wind over nub. Well, no, I think you. You gotta keep that. Gotta that's keep a lot that. of people in there. I mean, yep. that's. So actually, mm -hmm. just keep this map. I think the uh, upper mm -hmm. part you're yeah. good. Yep. All right. I can do that. So, um, if we go with a modified police district, this is this is it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Uh, if we're putting the whole picture together, though, uh, we have these budgets, but they don't include vehicle needs, and they also don't include space needs. Right? So we get up into a town wide department and need space for 10 people. We're out. Yeah. I don't even know that it, I don't know, the modified work. We're pushing it. So, uh, right? Can we just be consistent with what we're calling? We calling it expanded police district or modified police district? I've been calling it modified, but if you want to call it, I think we should just call it one thing, right? right. Because else we can. Yeah. The term modified makes it a little easier to swallow. If we call it modified, as opposed to expanded. Yep. <laughs> I like it. It's a good word, Yeah. Modified? Are we okay with that? Sure. Modified. Back in your right. reported days. Yeah. <laughs> modified. Right. Okay. That's it. Modified. Um, so if we look at the, the modified, we're at eight. Yeah. It's probably easier. One big happy. Yes. <laughs> we're looking to bunk desks. So. <laughs> well, they aren't all on duty at the same time, which is true. But. Which is still like them to have some. Yes, yes, no, I know. Okay. Let's put Rosalie Ross. Yeah. So I'll be telling her that tomorrow. I would think with that one, we're going to need to be ready to answer the kind of what does that look like? And are we going to need to be doing some remodeling to the building? Um, the town wide, we're definitely going to have to be looking at. A, new, a different facility. Is there any other space in that building anywhere up top besides you? No, anywhere? the historic no, nothing. are upstairs. Yeah. Nothing is yeah. empty. No. no. I, it's a little different than this. Yeah, I would say this is really the only unaccounted for space. Well, we have some at the fire station. I was going to say, what's in the fire <laughs> station? We do. We have some offices there and some space is not accounted for. It may not go over very well, but that's where we're going. Oh, yeah, side it's, by uh, side. The only coaching thing. Right, right. Don't get in my chair. Um, you know, the other thing, though, I don't know if anybody else's ears went up because you probably don't think it's about as devious as I do, but I heard about a lot of empty space at BTC. I know, right? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I was like, ooh, yeah. Hey. That's your sure outpost. That's my outpost. There you go. <laughs> there goes your expansion. I heard some employees that might be available, and I heard some. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the other and they is, wonder why we invite them in. Another thing I have to ask about the BTC owns that owns that property that's above Kingwood, right? They own they own the old site test lab there, mm -hmm. and that other, other building it was supposed to be some kind of a help <laughs> startup. With no, it's sold. Sure. Well, they don't own any. They don't own any of that anymore. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. No. Can't tell where's that square guy. Take care. Uh, and did it's you guys have the daycare in the lower building and um, some sort of call it the modified? That would be easier. Yeah. Yeah. That's its own. That's modified. modified. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Always seems to be space in that industrial park just about just about eighty nine two on the left. Yeah. So I think we're we gonna. Um, what we do need to do is look at uh, setting up the public. I think we might get a cheap deal on tires. Discussions with the public <laughs> and talk about where we want that to be. <laughs> there was some requests that we meet outside of the district. Hmm. Well, which we hear we BTC meet has at the a lot BTC. of space. Yeah, right. <laughs> we BTC. Uh, well, we, we would, would we have a, like a moderator like person or are we the moderator? How does that? Look. It's a good question. 
you know, I mean, we, 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 the thing I've been to a lot of really bad open forums where people aren't given a time limit and they, mm. you know, they go off on these things that they just want to talk about, uh, like the water. When Maybe we, it ought to be moderated by someone that's not on this committee. That's what I mean. Yeah. Don't, don't we have a town moderator? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kelly. But I think, right, right. But I think you have to present all the information on the big screen. She might not be a helpful. Right, you have to show the three districts on the big screen. You got to show the, the, the proposed budgets on the big screen, and you got to also show the tax, the, the anticipated tax costs in, on the big screen. So someone's got to be able to explain that. Right, so and I would suggest that the moderator the, can. Let's start with a location, and then kind of when we want to do it, and then who we want. We'll figure out who should be moderating it, mm -hmm. and then what information we want to be able to present. Um, so, looking at the feedback, um, how long, how much advance notice should we have out there? I mean, some of this stuff we ought to at least give people mm -hmm. the final drafts to be able to digest a little bit before they come into it. So, I think you're going to also need, yeah, I mean, some of those times that the deadline comes that first full week of November, so it might be on the 9th. We're asking the board for more time. And we kind of gave them a heads up. Yeah, last night, so they know that's coming. And then the week after would be good because you've got a meeting on the seventh, so we get to fine tune everything. We get to start doing the notice stuff now. Make sure everything's ready, coming out of the seventh, and then people have say at least a week to see the stuff. But we've started warning, noticing, publicizing. And you've got Thanksgiving. So we look at the week before. of the 13th? Or I think, so. I think that's a hard week. It's, it's the first week of deer season. That's what we do. It's, at least that's what I do and a great, great share of folks do. And the next week is Thanksgiving. So I think you have to have it the first week of December. And, that's, that's right. and I think it's also realistic to get, the, to, to get it out there. Are you going to put something in the newspaper? What's wrong with the week of November this? 27th? I mean, again, first week of December, that's right after Thanksgiving, right? So, you know, so first week of December. No, whatever. first week of December is December 4th. Oh, but the last week of November is the right? Yeah, that's right after Thanksgiving. That's fine. Uh, I mean, I, right. I, I'm and sure with that. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. The 9th is a Thursday. The mm -hmm. select board meeting is the 9th. 7th. The 7th was that next The 7th week. is here. Mm -hmm. The 9th is the select board. Oh, right. Yep. I meant 7th. Our yep. next meeting is the 7th. That's correct. Right, okay. Yep. So is, so is your thought then on the 7th, we clean everything up, it's nice and neat, it's clean, it's, everybody understands it, and then that's when it goes out. And then we get it out thinking? and yep. set a date and mm -hmm. a location, mm -hmm. and then we look at um, so who we want to be moderated. I think the right. week of the 27th, that would, that would give people more than two weeks, mm -hmm. yeah, a little more than two weeks. Do you think that's enough time? I think it is. Yeah, yep. the, the only challenge comes on the back end when we think about town meeting, because right. it's not March for that, it's the end of January. So we start to yeah. compress a right. little bit up against the board's decision-making mm -hmm. time frame, so it's not something to be aware of. Have that. you have a select board meeting the week of the 27th? Is that? No, the 9th and then the 14th. Okay. Although we're going to have more meetings, right? In that time, because budget time, we meet more often. Right. So they'll have enough time. I think time. the select board's also going to have to have their I mean, forms to talk to talk to the people about it as well. Because the select board's the one that's actually going to be putting it in front of the people. Well, they should be at the meeting to. when this is all presented. Maybe so, but now you now 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 you're changing a budget, possibly. So if we have yeah, something that we do the twenty seventh, then do we th did somebody say they thought it was important to hold the meeting outside of the district? I did. I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, because your possibilities are the Chandler or uh, some place up at BTC, like uh, Judd Jim or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is there some other? You get the high school. Mm -hmm. There's some space there sometimes. The BTC is a pretty I think BTC's popular, popular good big location. Has, has, can hold a pretty good sized crowd. Yeah. If, if in fact you even have a big sized crowd, but right. has the opportunity for that. I'll tell you, like we put our budget together and we have nobody come for the public here. Yeah. Um, right. Right. They all scream and holler after the vote. Yeah. But nobody shows up to Maybe even the Red School. So. I don't know. 
Oh, the Red School House, right. Yep. If you do it, well, I used to go to the budget meeting, but the yeah. problem was that okay. no changes could be made uh, at that point. Uh, so 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 the VTC is saying to the people up there, we want you to come. Yeah. I think that's important. I'd like to see it so advertised on a newspaper and, <coughs> you know, that, that we want you to come. I'd like to see it advertised on FPF and, uh, and, and, and whatever mediums are out there. We can figure out which day of the week is okay that week, but then... Um, should we stick to our right Tuesdays? Oh, do it on the 28th? Yeah. Well, do you think it's important to have one last meeting with all of us before we actually... We're going to, on the 7th. On the 7th? In yeah. two weeks, that'll give we have time to get everything cleaned up, get a kind of final seven. versions yeah. okay. and data and talk about, you know, more what... will be available actually. in the next two weeks after that, so... Um, so, are we looking at November 28th? Yep, sure. And um, we have learned that it's if you're doing a public hearing, you want people to have time to get home and whatnot. So, <coughs> six or six, probably, I would say, right? That gives commute times. And I think six is fine. All right, and who do we want to? What about Peter Nowen? Is he somebody who could moderate it? He used to be moderator. Well. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't had a, has he had any stake in the game or anything? I don't recognize the name, so. He would be good. He, he used to be in doing a lot of training work for the time. He'd be really good. Okay. I think Peter would be yeah. good. Yeah, he's an attorney. I bet he'd do it, too. Peter he's retired. Nowen. Yeah. I do know him really well. Hold on. He's a Vietnam yeah, vet. I mean, he's he used to be a town moderator. Yeah, got the experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, another one I was thinking of was Randy Garner. He just is a good public speaker. He's got a chance for right now, I think. Does he? I don't. I don't. I don't really know what he does so, anymore. Okay. Well, um, Trevor, would you look for a location? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I try to find something up at VTC. And you want to reach out to Peter? I can. Just yeah. to see. Okay. Okay. Let's we'll see if Peter. Do, do we have an alternate? Yeah. Let's have a yeah, back at any other games. Rose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, um, that's a hard pass, sir. <laughs> Outside the box. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with someone. Yeah. Okay. Well, Peter's available. He's not a. Could you send us the advertisement for it? Oh, just, yeah. uh, just, 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 just to see, see what kind of advertising we go out there. So. Yeah. yeah, once yeah. we pull it all together. Yeah, then, yeah. 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 great. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we could get so somebody that's not in Randolph. Thank you. I was just John thinking Benson that doesn't really get back. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 Who's the yeah. best moderator or, you know, something like that? Like you said, I don't envy a job. Sometimes I don't hear. It's a great job. Public meetings on all kinds of permits and projects. Right. We're a good time. We are. Yeah. Yeah. He made me cry, man. God. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So. Is it something? Do I need to get in pretty close, isn't it? Well, what else do we got? Mm -hmm. no. Process requirements, <laughs> the benchmarks. I think. Yeah. I think good with those. Some of the stuff you can talk about next time too, like final report, or if once we get back together after the public forum, now that we're sort of setting it up, that might be a time to talk final report. I'm starting to put something together for you just to block the spaces out. So, you know, introduction tasks, who's involved, just biz, those pieces. And then so do we want to, um, if we do the hearing on the 28th, then we'll come back together on the 5th mm -hmm. and talk about it. Yep, that's a good idea. And try to finalize. Mm -hmm. What goes to the yeah. select board? Do you need help with anything? Or are you good? Oh, oh yeah, there's a long need... list of stuff we need help with. That didn't sound like it was limited to this committee, was it? <laughs> 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 oh, I'm good at making cocktails. You do that, and I'll write the report while I make it. We start graded. I don't know where it'll end, but. <laughs> All right. Thank you for um, all your work and thank you for getting us everything you did.
More than that. Um, one of the things that we gotta think about is in that once we come back from the whole thing, like how, how this rolls out. And we will be making a recommendation, but also like how it goes about. Do we want to see it voted separate? Do we want it as a separate budget line item? You know, one of the risks and whatnot is I don't think we want to put this in the regular budget. You know, if it goes town wide, we don't want to put it in the regular budget because we risk the entire budget being voted down. Um, Stephanie's unmuted so. herself. Do you want to say something, yeah. Stephanie? Uh. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay. No, great. All right. Now she's muted. She needs Perfect. It. Um, you know, just some yeah, things to think about that, is yeah. the logistics side of right. it. Like, what is the risk? And by the time, if it votes down, if it votes down the entire town budget, by the time we put it back together and put it back out, you're now in that April, May, you're getting pretty close to the start of the year. So, I, you know, in my select board head, I'm thinking, I don't want to risk employee salaries and functions and whatnot mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much and mm -hmm. you know is this become a, a separate little slip of paper so probably need to have some level of a strategy conversation in that meeting well i move that we adjourn the meeting yeah <laughs> exactly. it's a non-debatable motion so you win <laughs> <laughs>